Hey everybody, uh, Judah Hoover coming at you here from the Landlords and Investors Mastermind Group, LIMG. I uh, just wanted to walk another property with you. Uh, somebody asked me to take a look at a house for him, uh, Amish fella who's uh, doing a rehab on a property in, again, another D quality neighborhood. And he said, hey Judah, I'm not sure if I need to do uh, the carpets in this property or not i walked through it and uh you know spent three minutes on the inside we're gonna go through the property here in just a second it's this blue one uh behind me and we're gonna just talk about what i saw uh when i was there on the inside i'm kind of spending some time out here on the street so you can see this is a very narrow street um we are north of dairy street in uh, downtown Harrisburg, which is great. Uh, we're still in the Allison Hill neighborhood, but north of Derry Street means that we're in a little bit uh, better block than what we were uh, when we were south of Derry Street uh, the other day. Even though the block looks a little bit rougher, uh, it is better than uh, some of those houses we were on the other day. And that's important to know when you're buying in an area what those major uh, thoroughfares are and if it means something if you're on the north side or south side or east side or west side of them um, because it can make a difference in the resaleability factor of the property and the rent that you're going to be able to get. Um, biggest concern I have on this block is it's it's especially tight right now because of the snow storm that came through but you know this is just a very narrow street there's uh, cars that are just kind of jimmied in and around uh, all along the side the other challenge that you get when you walk a property after a snowstorm like this is it's hard to tell how long a car has been sitting there if it's covered in snow um, but you know you can always kind of get a feel for for a car what it looks like when it is uh, you know, when there's not, when, there, when when all the cars aren't covered in snow, you can kind of tell which ones have been uh, run and used recently and which ones uh, haven't been. So uh, this property faces the back of some other properties, but we're going to get on the inside um, and I'm going to tell you what my notes for the owner would be and tell him what to do and we'll go from there. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Okay, everybody. So here we go. We're going to walk this property. I am parked in kind of a precarious situation outside. So we're going to do this one hopefully a little bit quicker than some of the other ones we've done. Uh, I'm trying to take a look here at this first window up front. You know, this is a pretty new window. Looks pretty good. His concern and question was, what do we think about this carpet? And this carpet you can see is just absolutely awful. I cannot believe uh, that this owner thought that maybe he could save this carpet or keep this carpet, even in a D quality neighborhood, even when you're trying to put lipstick on a pig, it is important uh, that you, you know, have serviceable carpet. And it does look like they've got some hardwood floor in here. So they're planning on doing uh, some hardwood floor someplace. There's a big snowstorm here the other day. And so the Amish crew that's working on this was not able to get here. Uh, you know, I would... I would be doing a whole lot of paint and carpet here in this room, not a whole lot else. These uh, lighting fixtures are very dated, and I would leave those alone. Uh, we need a new door jam here on the back, but it looks like that's a new door that they have. They're just working on getting it jammed in properly. This floor does not look that awful and does not look that bad. This kitchen is actually in pretty good shape for a rental. Um, I might change out that hood above the sink or the, above the stove just because it's looking a little bit old and a little bit dated and a little bit crusty, but countertop looks nice and I would probably keep that about the same. Let's see what we have out back. Not a ton of trash out back. Uh, you're backing right up against somebody else's backyard, so there's zero parking out there uh, and that's great. Let's take a trip to everybody's favorite location, the basement and see what we have down here. So we've got some water in the basement, very common on these, you know, close to a hundred year old houses. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is not, these are not support studs. This was like studded out for like a wall at some point. Someone was gonna think about potentially finishing part of this basement, which is just a hilarious thought in and of itself. Uh, all of these, joists look great no cistern action or anything like that 
The walls all look solid. I don't see any bulges or cracking or shifting. Uh, let me show you here something I thought was incredibly adorable. At some point along the line, somebody thought that they could insulate and raise the R value of the house by putting in cut block sheet insulation like this uh, and worked it up and around all those little wires and pipes and everything like that. Just an absolutely hilarious thought. Whoever thought they were doing that wasted, hopefully they didn't waste too much money on it, but they definitely wasted time and effort. Uh, but this is not a bad basement for what it is. There's a little bit of water over there because of the rain that we've had. Everything else down here is in pretty good shape. Here's the old furnace. Uh, there's a washer and dryer hook up here. And again, some two by fours run to kind of frame that out. Uh, I don't know how clothes would come out of this basement smelling cleaner than what they went in. Um, okay, let's talk about this here. So let's we'll start up here at the front actually. So old oil tank, first of all, always leave these here. Never cut these out, never take these out. If it's there, leave it there. If you try and cut this old oil tank out, which a lot of these old houses are gonna have in them, uh, you're just gonna end up looking at uh, a scent that is, or smelling a scent that's never gonna get out of the house. The smell of heating oil, I don't know what it is. Once it's in a basement, it never gets out. Uh, and so, but for some reason, it's magically sealed in that oil tank and you should just leave it there. This is the main gas line. Um, and it goes to the front of the house, There's a meter out there. Maybe it's out on the street or something like that or underneath the porch and we missed it, but uh, main gas line and you always follow that and make sure that it goes to the furnace and then you're not just assuming that it goes to the furnace uh, and this one does. And it looks, I mean, this is new. Teflon tape and everything like that. So this is pretty recently uh, installed. I don't know whether this owner did that or the previous owner did that. I know that we're coming in about a week, week and a half into rehab. And if they already got this done, they, they're, they're way ahead of themselves. This also looks like an, uh, maybe it was used when it went in here because I see some dirt and debris down here around the bottom. But this definitely looks like a newish hot water heater. And it's an electric hot water heater. Remember we talked about before, you'd see this big old cable coming out the top with the electric and right here is a panel and right down here is a panel as well. This is where, uh, I forget if they're called anodes or cathodes or what they are, maybe you can tell me in the comments, uh, but that's where those would be. It's the heating element, same kind of similar thing to what you see on your stove and behind one of those is a um, uh, thermostat that you can use to adjust the temperature. We've got braided cables there. Typically you see, or not cables, uh, braided water lines. Typically you see those going off the back of a washer dryer hookup. They've got them here utilized uh, for hookup on a hot water tank. And that's nice because you've got some flexibility and some play here, whereas you might not necessarily when you're tapping into your lines. These are very flexible lines and so they're good color-coded uh, red and blue for hot and cold. Makes it really easy to trace and track what's going where. Uh, obviously, whoever was here before loves their cable TV. These steps are atrocious. I would do nothing with them. I wouldn't do much with that basement, obviously. Get the junk out of it that was there from before. Uh, so you're giving it over empty to whoever your new tenant is. And move on. So we're going to paint and carpet here. We're going to do a new entryway door at the front and a new entryway door at the back. We're going to leave these lighting fixtures here. Uh, maybe do a different globe there or something like that, but basically leave all that the same. Ceiling looks fine. I would paint it white. These steps, I mean, I since you're already going to have a carpenter come in here, I would just carpet all these steps straight up. This is, you know, an abomination and an accident just waiting to happen. Obviously that's gonna be taken care of. The upstairs here is kind of the definition of lipstick on a pig. And 
you know, that's fine. They're rolling this. I would paint this ceiling, paint it a uh, drop tile ceiling is acceptable in this application. I would replace this carpet. Yeah, my, my advice to this owner is definitely going to be to replace this carpet. I'm not going to show you everything I found here in this bathroom, uh, but I would replace that tiling up there. I would leave this surround. I would get a new shower kit. And is, the sh is there a shower kit entry over here? It's one of the things you always have to check. Yep. All right. So, I mean, it looks like, and they already have it pulled off. So it looks like they know that they need to do that and uh, put a new diverter in there, hot and cold adjuster. I mean, the rest of this house is pretty simple. It's just a straightforward house. These windows, you know, that look out over the front of this house, the back of somebody else's house are dated a little bit. Looks like they're wooden windows. They replaced them with wooden windows, wooden replacement windows. Not sure why they went with that choice. We are certainly not in the historical district, but this is a one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom house, one bath, Parking's going to be a problem, but you do have gas heat, no AC. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a pretty, some of those houses we were seeing the other day were solid D houses. These are just, this is just a standard run of the mill D quality house. Going to cash flow great for you as long as you buy it right and don't put too much into it. Uh, but you're going to get very little appreciation. <clears throat> and. This place is gonna. This place is gonna look a whole lot better once the rehab is done, and I'll try to do another video once once that's taken care of. Hey everybody, uh, Judah Hoover here. Just coming back to you uh, in the car to wrap things up a little bit. Uh, gonna try and warm up. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's always colder in houses when you're walking them in the winter than it is outside. Uh, kind of counterintuitive, but it's amazing how much the sun warms things up. Just something to keep in mind while you're out there walking them. Uh, good things to keep in mind when you're buying D quality properties is, you know, you're not gonna be able to sell them in uh, bad economic times. Uh, so if you have a D quality property and you think you you might like to sell it sometime in the next uh, three to five years. Uh, you might want to sell it. Go ahead and sell it if you can. Um, they do not appreciate very well, and uh, they also don't sell very well. Jeez, that's the problem with. How's that for an unscripted moment? Uh, it's amazing what you'll get on yourself as you walk uh, some of these uh, not so great properties, but. You're going to find all kinds of stuff uh, uh, that's making a D quality property look very appealing, but you need to remember that you're going to have uh, some longer holding times than maybe what you intend to have in a down economic market. And when real estate slows down, these properties especially slow down and you can sell them, but you're only going to be able to sell them at a steep discount. Um, so, I mean... Classic economic uh, principles apply, buy low, sell high. Uh, don't try to sell uh, if the market is slow, just try to hold it through and weather the storm as best you can because the only way you're gonna sell it in a slow down market is at a pretty steep discount. Conversely, if you're ever thinking about getting into uh, the C and D quality uh, properties, buy in a poor market or a market that's been poor for a while because you can get uh, some really juicy deals uh, and motivated sellers. Uh, sometimes your best motivated sellers come from uh, other tired landlords that might be out there. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you find value uh, from what I'm trying to do here. Just walk some properties and uh, show you some good stuff. If you wouldn't mind, uh, please uh, give me a like, give me a share, give me a subscribe, comment in the video uh, you know, on YouTube here below. What did I miss? What did I mess up? Uh, what did I say wrong? Or what am I just absolutely wrong about? Uh, would love uh, some feedback from you guys. Thanks. Thanks and have a great day.